hello and welcome to a special episode of iBuzz with your host, Nasheen Bukhari. In this segment, we will review Country of Hotels, which is a British mystery three thriller about a room in a rundown hotel that has a profoundly dark effect on all who stay there. Directed by Giulio Maria Martino, the movie stars Adam Lees, Sabrina Feraldi, Michael Lawrence, and Charles Pike. To discuss this further, we are joined by the Trujillo himself, Giulio Maria Martino. Giulio, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me and giving me this opportunity to talk about the film. You're welcome. So, Giulio, give us a little glimpse, without spoiler, of course, that uh, what Country of Hotels is all about. Well, well, uh, Country of Hotels is about people, travelers, who come to a hotel, mm -hmm. they check into this hotel, and very strange and unusual things mm -hmm. happen to them. So it's in some ways quite similar to a horror film, although it has absurdist, surreal elements as mm -hmm. well, um, and a lot of dark humor. And yeah. it's really about the kind of strange experiences you might have when you visit a hotel and you're suddenly a stranger in a strange land. Mm -hmm. That's a sort of basic overview. Right. And Julio, tell us that what inspired you to make a film like Country of Hotels? Well, I work with a writer, David Hampshine, who we made the film together and we conceived the project together and then mm -hmm. created it together from the very beginning to the end, working together with each other in all departments. Mm -hmm. And we were working on a relatively low budget, mm -hmm. so we thought we needed to make a film in an enclosed environment that we mm -hmm. could control all of the, all of the elements. Right. And so we came up with the idea of this idea of a hotel with a very strange room mm. and mysterious corridors and a lobby and also a television where strange things happen on the television and mm -hmm. characters come in and out of the TV shows on the, te on the television in the hotel room. And mm -hmm. this was an idea that we thought would be a really potent idea for a film. And we also acknowledge, you know, there's a big history of strange hotels in cinema like Stanley Kubrick's The mm -hmm. Shining or Barton Fink by the Coen brothers. And we thought this was a very evocative, mm -hmm. strange place, but also a place that, you know, all of us have stayed in hotels at one time or, one time or another. And mm -hmm. all, of us, all of us have that experience of dislocation. And so right. it was really those ideas that, that, that gave birth to the film. Uh -huh. Right. Uh, you specifically chose a horror entry genre. Was there a particular reason behind that? Yeah, I, I think when you start out making films and mm -hmm you have to make a film which is then going to be sold and, and viewed and talked about if you don't have lots of big stars mm -hmm. in the film you know the horror genre and the mystery genre and this has got a bit of film noir in it as well like things that actually audiences will be with you know for many many years now since the 60s to 70s you know un un unknowns have created uh, horror films that have been sort of picked up and become sort of, you know, cult favorites, audience favorites, and they have, the audiences haven't expected to see big names in them. And that's a way of actually, you know, mm. finding, an, finding an audience, finding a market, and actually having your film seen. And it's much easier than, you know, were I to do a rom-com mm. or a, a, another genre, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, and uh, let's talk about the cast, Julio. How easy or challenging was that process for you? Uh, some of it was easy because I knew some of the actors personally. I've worked in the theatre mm -hmm. for many years, and so I was able to call on a, a, a wide array of those mm -hmm. people, some of whom I've known since I was at university with them. Some of our friends right. have gone on to be mm -hmm. super famous, and I could get them in the film this time. But, mm -hmm. it, you know, there are other cases where I was able to get people in, in, in roles, and in other cases I had to find people. And because some of the roles are very challenging, mm -hmm. it wasn't always easy to find people who were willing to do those parts. And so, mm -hmm. for example, uh, the character played by Siobhan Hewlett in the film Brenda mm -hmm. and um, Roger uh, Matthew Leach, you know, it took a long time to find those actors. And there's a lot of uh, auditioning and searching out involved and also persuading them that actually they could trust me. Mm -hmm. was a big challenge as well but you know we we got mm -hmm. there in the end and also we were a, a half british half american cast okay. making a film in britain and it had to seem mm -hmm. all, all united and, and and like there wasn't someone standing out for the right. wrong reason so it was a bit of a challenge mm -hmm. yeah right and julio you told that it was a limited budget project so usually what we see uh, especially in case of indie movies or 
movies that have a limited budget, they do not, um, you know, opt for a bigger cast. However, watching the trailer, I felt that the cast is humongous. There are like a lot of people working in this project. So how did you manage that and how was your experience managing the entire cast in a limited budget? Yeah, well, it, it, it's not easy. And so what I did is I tried to organize the early scenes with mm -hmm. actually people that I knew well so that we could all gain confidence with mm -hmm. each other. Because also, we're not, all, we're not only just working with the actors you see on screen, but there's a big crew or a relatively big crew mm -hmm. behind us. But we were very lucky to have a very, very competent producer mm -hmm. called uh, Sabah here, who was really able to sort of just, you know, on a sort of production line, sort of level just control everything and manage everything and we were working about an hour out of london mm. so people were being in and out all the time uh you know in order to keep the you know it's, it's a bit like repairing an aircraft in flight mm -hmm. uh you've got to keep the plane in the air moving but you're also having to sort of do repairs on it mm -hmm. and refuel it and stuff without landing and um it requires a very very high level of organization which we were mm -hmm. absolutely lucky because the film wouldn't have been finished if we didn't have a good mm -hmm. organizational department behind it. Right, right. And what were the major hurdles or challenges that you faced along with the most pleasant experiences while working on this project? Um, well, the most pleasant experience actually was mm -hmm. seeing the film finished, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and actually showing it in a cinema, which I did privately mm -hmm. in the middle of the pandemic. And that was absolutely the most pleasurable experience right. of it all. And it's going to be having a, a, a cinema screening uh -huh. uh, at a festival later this month. The, the, the most sort of difficult and challenging things were, you know, day by day uh, finishing work at sort of one or two o'clock in the morning, working uh -huh. alongside my uh, director of photography, preparing the shots for the next uh -huh. day, and then getting up at six o'clock and walking, you know, a mile to the, to, to the warehouse where we were filming and, you know, continue, continuing each day to sort of keep mm. the keep keep the machine rolling. And, and, and we one thing people don't realise when you're making a film on a relatively low budget is you don't really have all the camera equipment to even you know zoom in where you want. You have to book the zoom several days in advance. It arrives, you've got it for half a day, and then someone taps you on the shoulder and says, mm. uh, "We need to take the zoom back to the higher place now. Uh, you know, have you finished with it?" And that's your your time with the zoom lens for, for that day. And so, um, th th these are the sort of challenges you're working on at a day to day level. Mm. But challenges always, when you handle them well, always mm. produce interesting results. If you can find a way to work with the obstacles you have then you can actually mm -hmm. become even more creative, I find. Absolutely. And that was the idea behind having, mm -hmm. you know, everything in the limited locations as well. It mm -hmm. forces you to be more interesting and experimental. Right, right. Julio, it was great discussing your own movie with you. I wish you all the best. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks very much for having me. Great. Bye-bye. That was Julio Maria Martino discussing his movie, Country of Hotels. We will take a quick short break here and we'll be right back, so stay tuned. Welcome back. The first half of the fifth part of Money Heist has finally landed, offering a mold-breaking mix of betrayals, battle sequences, plot twists and so much more. To discuss this new arrival, we have Ayush with us, who is an entertainment journalist. Ayush, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Noshin, for having me here. So, Ayush, on September 3rd, it seemed like everyone was frantically refreshing their Netflix webpage or app, seeking out a slate with the iconic red jumpsuit and the Salvador Dali mask. Marking the arrival of the new and final season of Money Heist, were you one of them? Uh, absolutely, I was one of them and uh, to be honest, where I live in India, mm -hmm. a firm called uh, Verb Media actually declared a holiday for its employees. Okay. So they can actually see, see the season. It like was called Netflix it. and Chill Holiday. <laughs> yeah, so you can see that how this show has created such an atmosphere all over the world, not just in India or any other subcontinent state. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Ayush, the fourth part of the crime drama series left us at a frustrating cliffhanger, which seems to be an unrelenting habit of Money Heist's writers. 
Uh, do you think that cliffhanger was well taken care of in this fifth part? Uh, see, to be honest, see, uh, if you are a fan of Money Heist, fans, to be honest, don't care about the story part. Mm. They all care about how stylishly it is done. Mm. And that's why the show has gotten so far uh, in the world and turned into a pheno and turned into a phenomena. Mm. So I believe uh, the makers had uh, the chance to make it even better mm. for an extent. To an extent, they did it, but we all know that money heist is so big that people don't care about the story part. They all care about all these characters, Tokyo, Professor. So whatever they are doing for them, it is like Bible. Right, right. And now all eyes are on Sierra. Do you think that after becoming a mother, she seems to be a little compassionate rather than, you know, vengeful and that there are chances for her to become yet another city to the group? Well, uh, when uh, when that scene happened, you know, when uh, the professor helped him in conceiving the baby, uh, yeah. I believe uh, that uh, for a moment we believe that she might join them, but in the end there was a, again a cliffhanger ending for for the fans that yeah. he she had some clippers uh, in her hands and she actually rolled up uh, they rolled them up on uh, her yeah. sleeve. So now we don't know what she'll do with them. Is she going to again, you know, torture him, or uh, because he he has the audio clip? We all know that he has the audio clip, which can bail her out of all these, uh, all the scenarios that you know the the uh, the uh, the major has built uh, on her. So I believe that she will threaten her, but mm -hmm. I hope that she doesn't, and she becomes one more city uh, in mm -hmm. the high. Right, because you know, after all, there was a disappointment for her by her own crew, just like we, uh, you know, saw this happen with Raquel. So there are chances that you know Sierra is becoming the next Raquel. Yes, I, I believe that it, it can happen, and a lot of people believe that her new name will be Ibiza, so she okay. will be the new Ibiza of the team. So mm -hmm. if she gets that name, so I believe it will be amazing. And Sierra has her own reasons now. She has become a traitor in everyone's eyes. She has mm -hmm. betrayed pain by joining in with the professor mm -hmm. and the high team. So she wants to clear her name and she wants to do for her and her baby. Because we know that she wants to live in Spain and wants to have a good life. So uh, just like Raquel, I believe uh, Sierra has all the reasons uh, to join with the professor and the team. Right, right. And while we all adore Tokyo for her trademark cool rage, we grow to love Celine, which is her real name, as more of her backstory is revealing. Uh, dwelling on these scenes may either frustrate or calm audiences, but they add a welcome dimension to Tokyo. What are your thoughts on that? Um, actually, to be honest, uh, after season four, uh, people were actually hating uh, Tokyo for <laughs> what she's done because Absolutely. this heist is actually happening because of her. It was no point for the high, for the team to go for another high. Yes. So uh, I believe uh, they took the makers took care of it, and they believe that you, they need to create an atmosphere where they, where people feel that Tokyo is an admirable character. So they did exactly that. They did show us uh, her past, and uh, her past. When we saw her past, we actually uh, forgot everything that she did uh, in season four. We 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 liked her. We actually uh, took her uh, took her uh, to an extent that uh, where she can be, you know, uh, uh, I believe uh, mm -hmm. where she can where she can be uh, uh, taken as a hero and not as a villain for mm -hmm. for the group. So yeah. when she died, everyone felt that she sacrificed herself and not just mm -hmm. uh, died for uh, for herself or. Uh, you know, for, for the team. She sacrificed herself and turned into a, a god-like structure for, for the fans. Absolutely. And this is a, yet another, you can say, uh, a part that makes Money Heist stand out of all the seasons, that they're glorifying these thieves, you know. I mean, there, there is a bit of compassion uh, being built between the viewers and all these uh, thieves who are a part of this heist. So what do you think of that? Uh, see, I believe this is like the Robin Hood kind yeah. of thing, you know, where, where they are where they're, uh, stealing the money from the government 
and then giving to mm. some people who actually need it now the professor why is professor doing all this because mm. he did not have uh, money to you know uh, support his brother mm. and and cure his illness yeah. meanwhile tokyo and everyone else has their own have their own reasons mm. so but when people get to know about these reasons they connect with it now now like just like tokyo she wanted to get revenge for his uh, for his boyfriend's um uh, you know heinous uh crimes of or or any or anything like like he was murdered but to be honest he or she also wants to get out of this crime business now she is doing anything and everything to do that mm-hmm. so that's why uh, you know fans are so so uh, compassionate about these characters because they can resonate with them Yes. and it has been a, a it has been a good thing for this series because the first two parts did not work well for uh, for them you know they canceled the show but netflix has 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 a knack for taking these kinds of series and making mm-hmm. and turning them into a phenomenon and that's what happened with money heist mm-hmm. as soon as this show reached uh, uh, the masses the other parts of the world i believe people resonated with it and yeah. they saw that it might happen with them as well not the high spot but uh, but uh, the situations that uh, that been building up uh, into the entire series absolutely and ayush uh, denver and rio seem to be pretty submerging in this part whereas berlin's presence was still kept alive through the flashbacks now we saw a bit of injustice happening here how would you analyze that <laughs> uh now you see uh Uh, to be honest uh, uh, this is uh, berlin is such a character that everyone wanted to see mm-hmm. you hate him to the core yeah. but you want to see him if uh, 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 i mean uh, berlin is that kind of character so uh, i think it's it's just a it's just fan service uh, he doesn't add add up to the uh, to the stories anything uh, uh, importance but mm-hmm. for fan service the makers thought that okay just add berlin so that his fans are also uh, you know also connect with mm-hmm. us and they see the they see, they see the uh, the season 5 or part 5 so uh, i think i think uh, uh, bringing in uh, berlin was just fan service for me yes uh-huh. we got a good uh, good uh, kind of uh, back story about how mm-hmm. he he actually got together with his uh with his son mm-hmm. and how he actually turned him into a mm-hmm. into a, a thief as well mm-hmm. so now it 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 will be in- interesting to see if his son is also you know mixed yeah. with a, a, a professor or the team or he is actually doing something in in the backyard and we don't know yet right right also this gives a bit of a hint or a clue for the next part that what berlin was actually up to because we did not see his son taking part in any of these heists but we saw the training aspect and we saw everything happening you know how he he's been uh, trying to prepare his son for something bigger so do you think that this is going to be revealed in the next part it has got something to do with the with the release uh, which is coming in in december um i i believe that makers would try to you know uh, tie all the loose knots because they need because the fans are actually so uh, so much into this show that they would need to have some answers they would not like the show to end and uh, they just uh, know that okay what happened with him or what happened with this character mm. so every i i believe every character would have uh, his or her ending mm-hmm. now it's up to the makers if they want to make a uh, uh Berlin son joined the team mm-hmm. or is he actually or already working with them because right. whatever we have seen of him it's actually in the back story so we don't know mm-hmm. if ever if he ever joined the team or not and if mm-hmm. he is already with the team that would be a game changer right. to be honest because he will be the mastermind he's a civil engineer shown in the show so mm-hmm. i believe that would be an amazing thing to do a little difference right ayush stockholm yeah. she is becoming the least favorite character lately do you think that her presence <laughs> in the crew is becoming useless now um see i have never seen a character going from uh one of the strongest characters to one of the most useless as audiences say mm-hmm. uh 
in in episode 2 we saw that uh, she uh, she shot Arturo and yeah. we all were happy that finally this man is will be out of the series yeah. now because no one want, wanted to see him but Absolutely. in the end when when everything happened with Tokyo uh, or Denver and uh, Manila yeah. she I, I don't know why did she put, uh, take that morphine shot and you know went into a trance so yeah. believe me a lot of fans that a lot of friends that i've talked with they are actually not happy with what stockholm did and uh, they are i um, i mean the disappointment mm-hmm. is is uh, is actually uncanny to mm-hmm. uh, because i don't think that uh, she did something so big that you can pinpoint to her it was mm-hmm. always uh, something that uh, uh, that was bound to happen yeah. because money heist makers Absolutely. are known for this <laughs> yes so, Yes, yeah, it was meant to be. So uh, I think Stockholm is just being used as someone that mm-hmm. can be hated right now because Arturo and Tokyo have are gone. Yeah. So they can't hate anyone now. Mm-hmm. So they need someone to hate. So right. now Stockholm has been made someone to be hated for. Right, right. And I use the touch of emotional connection, passion that the writers tried to put in. Do you see it well balanced in the entire season? Uh, yes to be honest uh, uh seasons i think the the volume 1 was uh, in my context i believe that it was more emotional than the first four uh the first four was all over all about the heist and mm-hmm. yes we saw back stories but season 5 took the emotional quotient 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 to a to a whole new level you never knew what happened to tokyo in his, in her back in her back story we got to know and we know that why tokyo big became like that because right. she lost someone mm-hmm. uh, she loved now now the now uh, like uh, like with sierra yeah. sierra used to hate professor but yeah. when when she, when he helped her uh, with the baby uh, yeah, her, we see we see a bit of change emotions, in emotions for him yes yes emotions, right. her emotions change yeah. her emotions change she cried and she actually told uh, Martel mm-hmm. and, and and Benjamin to go and bring some clothes for her Absolutely. baby so that also that right. also brings uh, an entirely new flavor to the show right and so i think the emotional quotient was high and uh, mm-hmm. i think the part 2 will have even better emotional mm-hmm. quotient than that right right ayush thank you very much indeed for such a lovely review thank you for joining us Thank you thank you so much Nosheen bye 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 That was Ayush Sharma reviewing the latest Money Heist and that is it from today's episode we hope you liked it don't forget to share your feedback on the social media link mentioned down below We'll see you next time until then take care and goodbye